I've been watching YouTube for roughly a decade now and have gone through a lot of transitions in my interests on the website. I initially started using the website to watch Battle Rap as that's been a huge part of my life since I was about 11 years old, but eventually I started going through phases of being infatuated with certain genres of videos. Gaming, sketch comedy, basketball, movie reviews, commentary, video essays, I've been all over the place with my viewing habits. And naturally, in doing so, I have left most of my at-one-time favorite creators in the dust, either unsubscribing from them or leaving them in my sub box to collect cobwebs for eternity with no chance of revisiting them in the future. So when I say that there is one channel that I had been truly invested in for my entire tenure of watching videos, that speaks volumes to the talent and dedication that the channel in question constantly displays. What channel could this possibly be, you ask? It's the most beautiful men on the internet, Red Letter Media, who I also like to appropriately call your favorite YouTubers, favorite YouTubers. A prominent example of this is Jax Films dedicating an entire segment of his video to discussing how fantastic their content is. And fantastic it is, as there has never been a fluctuation between channels who I consider to hold the spot as my favorite content creators on the platform. And if you don't believe me, then you can ask their over 10,000 supporters on Patreon, which puts them in the top 50 of most subscribed to feeds on the site. Even though their channel is at roughly 1.3 million subscribers, their videos rack up more views than most channels that are three times their size. Both of the aforementioned statements signify that Red Letter Media has a very intense following, where nearly the entirety of the community is super active, but the same question that pops up in every video still remains. Why? Why have they been able to have a level of longevity unparalleled by most people who have been uploading for over a decade? What's the secret formula, and where do we start in dissecting it? Before we get to answering all of those questions, we're going to get into the most brief backstory time that I've ever done, because there's a lot more to talk about other than just this. The story starts in the radical decade of the 1990s, with high school friends Mike Staclossa and Rich Evans messing around with home videos as most children in the 1990s did. As the new century approached, Mike linked up with a guy named Jay Bauman through a message board for amateur filmmakers. The two started doing wedding videography together and made a bunch of horrible B-movies with the most popular being Gorilla Interrupted, a future Criterion candidate. In 2004, Mike and Jay decided to put a name to the production company. Hence, Red Letter Media was born. After taking another flash forward to 2009, we get to the point where their name became established on YouTube after they released a review of the film Star Wars The Phantom Menace. This wasn't just any review though, it was reviewed by Mike playing a senile and psychopathic old man named Mr. Plinkett. This went on to become a series as he would extensively review the other two films of the prequel series and they would turn out to do incredibly well as the re-upload of the first part of the episode 1 review is currently sitting at over 10 million views. And the rest? It's history. Red Letter Media continued to consistently grow, diversify their content, and become one of the most influential and adored channels on the platform. Now that the backstory is out of the way, the question becomes, how did they do it? I think the best word to delve into first that accurately covers multiple different facets of the channel is individuality. When I make the statement that Red Letter Media is unlike anything I've ever seen on YouTube, that is not an exaggeration. If I was to initially describe the channel to you as a group of five men in their 40s sitting in a warehouse-like studio talking about movies, I wouldn't be far off, but I can't imagine that description is particularly enticing. In fact, it might sound a little bit juvenile, but I can assure you that it is anything but. One of my favorite videos on the channel is a time-lapse they released 
eight years ago of their teardown and setup process for one of the most popular series, Half in the Bag. From that video alone, it's apparent that they aren't like anyone else in their genre, let alone anyone else on the website in general. The effort they put into their content behind the scenes is astounding, especially considering the channels that put in a similar amount of effort have entire production teams behind them. While Red Letter Media is just a core of three people with a couple additional people sometimes coming in to help. They have proven that they don't need help in creating superb and high effort content, and that is quite remarkable in this day and age. You see, in a time where ad revenue is next to nothing, most creators rely on things such as sponsorships or long-term contracts with brands. This is heightened in the entertainment side of things where a lot of channels are viewed as sellouts to big corporations in order to get early access to events and films. In return, the channels are generally asked to give glowing reviews of whatever they witness, regardless of the true quality of the product. It's a two-way relationship of leeches sucking all they can out of the other entity. And the value and validity of media criticism has taken a hit because of it. So, hypothetically speaking, what if there was a channel that amassed more popularity than any of the Hollywood shills ever did? So much so that the mass media conglomerate simply couldn't control it. Well, that's Red Letter Media. They can do whatever they want with their content because there isn't a single soul who can tell them otherwise. They're completely self-made as they started their Patreon in 2009 and it grew alongside the channel to create a pretty solid foundation of funds to be pulled from. Their operation is based in Milwaukee, which might as well be considered the middle of nowhere by entertainment standards, yet they still managed to attract some big name celebrities like Macaulay Culkin and Patton Oswalt to come on their shows. Not only do they not conform to the shills, but they actively take part in making fun of them. One of the most beloved series on the channel is called Nerd Crew, which is viewed by most as a direct parody of the Collider channel. This was before it became another Watch Mojo clone and was home to such programs as Collider Live and Jedi Council, and such people as Christian Harloff, a figure genuinely hated by most of the Red Letter Media fan base. In Nerd Crew, they would make fun of elements of Collider's podcasts like the pointless speculation, the meaningless news hype train, their inherently leech-esque nature, and their constant effort to suck up to Disney. If this was a channel within the circuit creating this unabashedly condescending content about another channel, they would very likely be blacklisted and banned from industry events. But that's the beauty of Red Letter Media. They can say what they want about the subjects of their videos and there are no repercussions. Their reach will still be as giant as ever and they will be able to evade the censorship that most channels fall under at one point or another. They even told famous screenwriter and professional trash can Max Landis exactly why they thought one of his films was awful to his face, which is almost the ultimate statement of freedom and being absolved from censorship. So when they take a stab at a review for a new film in their series Half in the Bag, you can be guaranteed that the opinion you will be receiving is neutral and completely unbiased because there's no reason for it not to be. I mean, they're even honest about themselves. One of the most common jokes on the channel is for the crew to make fun of their most recent feature film, Space Cop, which everybody thought was horrible. So maybe that's actually the ultimate statement of anti-censorship. Making fun of your own movie because you were the only people involved in the production of it. And all the higher ups are literally yourselves. All of this is great, and I have space cop jokes that could last an entire video, but there are other things that we should be moving on to, unfortunately. Another facet that makes the group stand out from their peers and contemporaries is constant evolution. Change is a scary thing, and once a channel finds a formula that works and provides good traction, it can be difficult to take the next step in fear of breaking the stasis that has been obtained. Setting themselves apart from the pack once again, Red Letter Media has absolutely mastered the progression of content. And as an example, we're going to be looking at one of their most popular and long-running series, Best of the Worst. Best of the Worst is a series where the group chooses a number of videotapes, most of the time three, and watches and discusses them to come to the conclusion of which among them is the best. 
So this comes off as something that could be a flagship series on a channel. It's certainly unique and the charm of watching old garbage VHS tapes is very refreshing, especially combined with the impeccable banter of the group. That being said, what happens when the idea becomes more stale? Sure, the content of tapes can provide different laughs and enjoyment every single time, but the concept is susceptible to running its course. This is the point where a lot of creators would diverge into one of two paths. One, they would run the idea into the ground, and even though they would retain their audience for a while, there is a high chance people will start to become bored and fade away, i.e. the majority of commentary channels. Two, they would feel like they've done all that they could with the series and ditch it for something new and even more fresh. In doing that, they do revitalize their audience but risk the chance of people being completely turned off by the direction change, i.e. Bobby Burns. Instead of falling into one of these tropes, Mike and Jay forge a third path that I find is a perfect balance between the two. They'd make the same baseline content but introduce new and interesting variables every once in a while. They started by introducing a wheel that would decide which bad movies they would watch, adding a bit of an exciting deterrent from the predetermined aura the original best of the worst gave off. Then, they introduced something called the Blinketto Board, a play on both the Plinko Board from The Price is Right and the storied character from the channel, Mr. Plinket. They added a series called Black Spine, which entails the crew having no idea what is on any of the tapes they're watching. Holiday episodes, Black Spine Jenga, scavenger hunts, spotlight episodes. They managed to keep their content fresh by keeping the bottom line of the show, but constantly changing up the manner in which they get to the bottom line. If that makes any sense. There's both a sense of never knowing what you're getting and familiarity at the same time, which is an equilibrium that is very uncommon in any medium. That being said, the one thing that you do know you'll get with a Red Letter Media video is fantastic rapport between the cast of characters, which is yet another thing that makes them so impressively special. Group channels on YouTube, which is something I will get into on a later date, are a very tricky matter. It's very difficult for one to get going off the ground unless it's a group of YouTubers who can bring their existing audiences into the fray, creating something of a supergroup. Channels like 2Hype, Sidemen, eBoys, and Offline TV are pretty solid examples of such. Yet in every single one of those groups there has been drama, so there are still a couple of problems with this. Egos can get involved, chemistry can take some time to develop, and friendships based off of YouTube, which rarely have any significant longevity to them, have been proven to be rather breakable. Taking that into consideration, imagine the strength chemistry and bond between a group who one, didn't start their journey together on YouTube, two, have known each other for over two decades, and three, seemingly have no egos about them whatsoever. The cohesion that Rich, Jay, and Mike have with each other is something that can only come from experience and pure enjoyment of each other's company. Add on to that the fact that their improvisational skills with bits, puns, and just about every type of comedy in existence is pretty high up there, and you get a channel that very likely has the biggest cult following and status on the platform. And I'd be hard pressed to say that if I took a random stranger off the street and showed them one of those videos, that any one of them would disagree with that comment. The talent that these gentlemen emit is so potent in everything that they create. Name me another channel that can make a whole hour long special of one of their main shows where they intentionally talk about anything but the movie that the video is about and make it as entertaining as one of their normal videos. You simply can't. Red Letter Media has created a legacy on YouTube as a group of friends doing what they love extremely well and free from the confines that most similar channels find themselves in. Not only do they find themselves in this place, but they utilize it to their advantage and take on the role of film critic renegades, rejecting the conventions of their genre of content while providing some of the best creations that YouTube has ever seen. I love it. But not as much as I, I fucking, fucking love, love Star, Star Wars. Wars! Fucking Star Wars!